Yo guys, what is up? Max and I want this video and today we're going over a lot of the most asked questions that I receive about builds, about endgame. Uh, we're going to be talking about class mods, we're going to be talking about enchants, we're going to be talking about the buff meister, we're going to be talking about class power and crit chance and so much more. I hope that you find this video helpful. It's going to be kind of like a compilation, just a lot of like information that I've learned about Wonderland. So I hope you guys found the video helpful. Let's get right into it. All right, so this video is going to be a lot of rapid fire information, and I hope you guys learn something new from it. And we're starting out with the smart armor. Now, this smart armor is a very popular choice right now for Stabamancer builds because it's going to give you, or it should technically give you, more damage while you're in from the shadows. I'm here to tell you that you should not be using this class mod on your builds. And the reason for that is because it breaks and stops working on death or on map transitions. Um, you will get the bonuses back. Like, you'll, you'll still keep the passives on it you'll still keep the skill points on it but the actual legendary effect of it the crit chance being reduced and crit hit crit hit damage being increased you will lose so right now if we uh look at my uh critical hit chance it's being reduced by this i've got 3.9 as where i usually have at least seven and my spell critical hit chance is at 51 percent, where i usually have at least a hundred percent so we're gonna go into this map and i'm just gonna show you that uh it'll just randomly break so I've now done um, some mobbing. The portal thing pops up to go transition into another portal. And uh, you will see that I am still at my 3.9 critical hit chance, right? And now we're going to grab, let's grab Searing Tether. Pop into our next map. And let that thing go away. And boom, it is now broken. So my spell critical hit chance is now back to normal and my critical hit chance is back to normal. So I'm no longer benefiting from this smart armor, AKA do not use this on your builds. Um, it can be fine for just like save quit boss farming, but for actual chaos chambers, uh, you're just hurting yourself by wearing this thing. Next up, the spell blade is a melee weapon that says it does spell damage. It does not do spell damage, but it does scale off of spell damage. It does melee damage, triggers melee effects. It does not trigger spell effects, but you can scale it with both spell and melee damage. Next up, class mods give you skills that you are not specced into. Um, for example, this is a spell shot berserker class mod. I would never get that berserker point because i'm not specced into the berserker you actually have to have that class selected to benefit from it but for example this is a plus one high thread count class mod and the way to just to like you could test this with a bunch of different things but i just want to show you this so like for example with spell weaving i should have max stacks of five right but i'm getting an extra point into high thread count so that i'm getting my plus three uh, so I now have eight stacks of spell weaving, even though I'm not spec a single point into my skill tree. And you can test that real quick by just like, for example, if I just check out some TDRs, um, normally this would stop at five, but because I have this class mod on, I am benefiting from that skill. So now I have plus eight. And for example, if I take this class mod off, now I have plus five. Um, so you do benefit from skills on your class mod even if you're not specced all the way down to them but you do have to actually be playing that class meaning i would never get these berserker points if i'm not actually grabbing the berserker as a subclass next up are possible armor rolls now one of my most asked questions on the spell slinger video was why wouldn't you get a class mod with plus one into high thread count plus three double knot well simply because that doesn't exist that's not a roll um class mods cannot roll with any random um skills they have like set skills that they will roll with for set classes and showing on screen right now is the set rolls for classes for example if i was playing a spell shot and i wanted to get high thread count um i can only get spell shot high thread count with a berserker or high thread count with a spore warden i cannot get a spell shot graveborn class mod with high thread count similarly if i wanted to get a spell shot power class mod with double knot i can only get that with the stabamancer no other secondary class or multi-class will roll with double knot on it with spell shot primary power this document will be in the description if you guys want to look at it but this is part of the reason or part of the ways that i plan out builds and what i want to work on is i look at what two class combos get the best skills into them or what best skills come with what two classes and then go for building a build off of that class mod and the skills that it comes with 
Next up, I was getting asked a lot of questions about how I got my spell critical hit chance to over a hundred percent in my spell slinger video, and your spell critical hit chance is based off of the spell that you are holding in your left slot. If you're not playing the spell shot, it's whatever spell you have equipped. This is not global spell critical hit chance. It is just telling you your chance to crit with your spell in your main slot or your left slot. So note right now, uh, I, I just had 116. If I swap this over, this Threads of Fate, which only has a 2% critical hit chance, you'll note that my critical hit chance is now 22%. This is for this spell. If I put back in, for example, my Ice Spike, I would still have 100% critical hit chance with this Ice Spike and 22% with this Threads of Fate. It is going to tell you your critical hit chance with this spell that you have equipped, and it'll look at the spell in the left slot. It is not global spell critical hit chance, just for the spell that you are using. Next up, the Soaked buff is worded weirdly. It says Soaked enemies take 150% damage from Lightning and Frost. This is correct. They do take 150% damage. This is not 150% more damage. This is 50% more damage. So 150 being the total damage they're taking, 100% being what they normally take, and that 50% being the extra from the soaked, meaning you are getting 50% more damage from lightning and frost, not 150% more damage what you normally would be dealing. Uh, just a quick thing there. Next up is understanding how the buffmeister works. Now the buffmeister is arguably the best spell in the entire game, but you could be using the wrong one for your build. Now, every buffmeister has two words at the very bottom. They have the option of being zap, bonk, kachow, or pew. This buffmeister right here is a bonk, kachow. Bonk, kachow, bonk part is going to give me 80% increased melee damage, and the kachow part is going to give me around 80% increased ability damage and around 60% increased ability crit chance. Each different word corresponds to a different buff. Each buffmeister will come with two buffs. So, for example, this one, Pew Zap, Pew is going to give me handling, accuracy, recoil, fire rate, reload speed for my weapons, and the Zap will give me 80% spell damage. So, for example, if I'm using a spell melee build, I would want Zap and bonk, so I'm gonna get spell damage and melee damage. If I'm using abilities and guns on my build, I would want a Kuchow Pew. Um, showing on screen right now is the actual values for each of these and how they line up, but just know that depending on what your buffmeister says at the bottom is how you actually want to use that buffmeister and what it'll actually be buffing. It is important to note that cryo buffmeisters act differently than any other element in buffmeisters. So for example, if I'm wearing a dark magic buffmeister and I have this bonus damage, which it increases my direct damage dealt by 203, if I am using this buffmeister and I shoot my weapon and I'm going to increase my gun damage as much as possible, my gun damage will hit harder and therefore my buffmeister bonus element will hit harder because I'm scaling all my gun damage and I'm using a non-cryo element. If I am using a cryo buffmeister, cryo is different from any other element, cryo scales off of spell damage, meaning if I increase my gun damage a whole bunch with percentage gun damage increases, my buffmeister's damage as a bonus element won't actually change based off of how much damage I'm shooting with my gun. It will change based off of how much damage I have with spells or how much percentage spell damage increases I have, meaning you basically always want a cryo buffmeister with a uh, zap on it. Zap gives you 70 or 80 percent increased spell damage which is going to directly impact the damage of the bonus element of the buffmeister so if you're using a cryo buffmeister make sure you have zap on it even if you're not using spell stuff and generally if you're using spells cryo buffmeister if you're not using spell stuff don't use a cryo buffmeister unless it has zap on it next up are companions and what companion does spell damage and what companions do gun damage this is very confusing the best resource that i've found is this companion damage scaling spreadsheet which i will have in the description uh, if you want to click on that and like look through it for yourself but different pistol styles different shotgun styles will deal different amounts of damage and companions work with um spell damage skills and gun damage skills so for example this is a whatnot pistol the whatnot is a is a tedior or a furior pistol that is not in the crossbow style if it is not in the crossbow style that means it's going to be dealing gun damage and this gun damage can work with skills like play the angles or anything that is triggered off of gun damage it's going to benefit from gun damage increases think of this as just shooting your weapon the 
Fear knots are crossbow style weapons, and because they are crossbow style pistols, pistols specifically, they will deal spell damage and work with spell damage skills. For example, double knot, which is part of the reason that these things are so strong, and same with like blast gas. So it's not that the fear knots or like are just straight up better than like whatnots. It's just that fear knots do spell damage and whatnots do gun damage. And you can manipulate that to make a gun damage build with whatnots, for example, or a spell damage build with fear knots. It really just depends on what you want to go for. Um, and then there are different styles of companions. You can have a pixie that does gun damage. Not all pixies do spell damage and not all hydras do spell damage. You can get gun damage throwing hydras it really just depends on the style and once again i'll refer you to that spreadsheet because it would be a lot of time just to walk through every single different style of weapon and what kind of damage type it'll actually deal all right guys that is going to do it for the video unfortunately we didn't get to like loot lock and class power and some other mechanics that i actually have already recorded but i'm going to be saving for a part two and if you guys have any advice for new players to this game or tips that have helped you in the end game be sure to drop them down below in the comments i will catch y'all in the next one guys take care Peace. I was